There are some terms that you are going to need to know. For the most part, these won't be new concepts for you, but you do need to know the words. A class is a definition. It's the definition of an object, which can be instantiated from the layout of things defined in the class. This is the instance, the executable form of the code and data that was defined in the class. You can create lots of objects from one class definition. Encapsulation refers to the fact that a single object contains data and it contains the methods that work on that data for an object. The encapsulation can be closed for some things, some private things, that the outside world has no business diddling with. Other things are exposed. This is not only a clean and easy to understand arrangement, but it makes future changes easier because you know exactly what you can change without affecting the outside world. Because of an interface being like a contract or a promise, it's possible to have objects dynamically created and become part of the program. This is known as loose coupling. For example, say you have a graphics program that displays lots of shapes on the screen. Now, if these shapes are all predefined and part of the program, then they are said to be tightly coupled. They're part of the program itself. On the other hand, if you have a bunch of shape classes that implement a standard interface or set of interfaces, then you can create these objects willy-nilly and your program will know how to deal with them. This is known as loose coupling. You can throw out old ones and throw in new ones anytime and your program can still deal with them. If an object holds itself together well as a unit and does a good complete job of being a representation of the actual thing that it represents, it's said to have tight cohesion. The more it is completely contained, the tighter its cohesion. It's a matter of the quality of the software design. The tighter the cohesion of the objects, the better off you are. Now, these two terms mean the same thing. The first one is the older version. The second one is the newer term. They each refer to a value passed to a method call. The term parameter here is the older. These two mean the same things. The term parameter is the name of the value defined to be passed to a method. That is, in the newer terminology, the name of it is the formal parameter, whereas the value itself is the actual parameter. The older terminology is to refer to its name as a parameter and the actual value as an argument. The source code of a class is compiled into executable code that can be interpreted by the Java Virtual Machine. That set of executable code is called bytecodes. When there is an update to the API such that something, a method or a class or whatever, has been superseded by a better or preferred way of doing things, the old item is flagged as being deprecated. It still works, but it's flagged by the compiler and the new item is described as part of the documentation. The JVM is the Java Virtual Machine. It's the program that loads and executes Java class files. Several methods of the same name can be included in the same class definition as long as they all have a different set of argument types defined for them. The method name then is said to be overloaded. You can define a variable of the same name as the one in a larger scope, such as the one inherited from the superclass. The local variable is the one used and it's said to override the one in the outer scope. This is the action of an object to retain its internal data from one instance of itself to the next. Often relational databases are used to contain object data that is persistent.